In today's video, I'm going to be talking about APS-C lenses on full frame, and in particular, the Sony 10-20G PZ F4. This lens is smaller than the 10 to 18 Sony OSS, as you can see right here. And what I like about it is that at 10 millimeters, it doesn't extend either. So if you look at the OSS lens, you see it can grow quite a bit. Same with the Sigma. It's Those are like the reverse zoom type of lenses and they annoy me a little bit. So I went to optimize a little bit further, getting the 10 to 20 instead. And this is the latest version. So this lens is going to give you better stabilization, probably be better autofocus. It has more of the controls, the button, the AF MF switch, and it has a power zoom rocker and it is internal zooming. So it is a great lens. However, if you've seen my previous videos on this series, the 10 to 20 PZ, when it has a normal zoom range, it's 1.5 crop. However, in full frame mode, it creates a larger image circle than 1.5 crop. However, it's not large enough for the full frame image circle. And what happens is that when you go towards the telephoto end, it creates a vignetting because at the rear of the lens has this baffle. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove the baffle of the 10 to 20. It's not quite the same as other lenses. It may be even more uh, difficult to do, but in this video, I'm gonna take this lens apart anyways, and I'm gonna help you do it in case you're insane enough to try these things on a new lens and you can scratch it, you can damage it. That is my disclaimer. And this will work particularly well for dynamic stabilization. It won't work as well for active stabilization. So if you're looking for a lens that works with active stabilization, I would suggest looking at the Sony 10 to 18 OSS or the Sigma 10 to 18 F2.8. Yes, F2.8. So back to this lens, the Sony 10 to 20. It is a great lens. And the reason why I'm picking this over the Sigma and the Sony is that stabilization is a little bit better despite not having OSS. And on top of that, I just find the color more in line with what I'm expecting from a Sony lens. And it just, it's just easier straight off the camera if I'm working with this lens and the size factor. I do like that this is the smallest of the bunch and by quite a big margin in my opinion, because these are small lenses. So at 10 millimeters, or even at 12, you know, this thing is not extending. That's about a centimeter and a half in size. And this is 62 millimeters as opposed to 67 of the Sigma F 2.8. And on top of that, the build quality is, is just tremendous. And I got a really good deal on Fred Miranda. What's interesting about this lens is that it has a weather sealing gasket right here and uh, this can be removed and the tools you will need are two like of these finer screwdrivers and they have to be like quality otherwise the head can strip it has to be the exact size and I got this little paper clip that I bent into place and this paper clip is just in case I have to push very small items around and move things into the right location. And I believe you only need this Phillips screwdriver, but I have the um, the flat one too in, in case I need to apply something. Okay, so let's get removing. I have everything on a white surface. I just had scrap paper laying around. And the reasons for that is that I won't lose the items once I put them around here. It's easier to see the items. Okay, so I'm going to loosen diagonally first. And if you have the right screwdriver, it's going to go in really easy. So let's go. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so the screws are removed and it's trying to pop up just on its own. And that's just how it is because right here, you see these contacts, there is a, a cable underneath. And okay, so what you gotta do, you have to carefully remove it in case there's uh, like washers or something. And okay, so there are washers. And you do not want to rock the lens, okay? <laughs> the washers are right there. One, two, three, four. So there's two yellow ones and two silver ones. And I do not want to move that. And as you can see right here, the lens, the, the lens element, you see how large it is? Once I cover this, it creates that vignette effect at the longer focal lengths. So when this is peeled back, you can see, and uh, that's just how much larger the element is. Okay, so when you're, <laughs> don't be afraid, it's just sitting there. So with this lens, the rubber gasket, you see this darn thing? It's nice that it can be replaced because it's, it's falling apart already. And uh, this is going to be a little bit troublesome. I can already see, okay? So it just slips on very softly like that. And okay, so to remove the baffle, you can see there's three, uh, four clips. But once you get one off, it should be good enough to go. I'm gonna try to get this bottom one. Uh, yeah. Is this even clipped on? No, it's not. So I'm just gonna remove this side. Okay, so you don't wanna peel it too much. It might break, uh, cause it's clipped in. Okay, there it is, it went. So it should be enough that you go on this backside. Maybe you could pry it out, two of them are gone. There you go. Okay, so I did that. And what happened? Oh man. Okay. Um, this one fell. See, that's what this this is for right here. When I was moving around, one of the washers fell out. So I'm gonna gently put it back on. I gotta fix this washer. This one's off as well, right there. Ah, this washer fell down right here. Okay. So that, this has become a little bit of a disaster, but I, I guess it's not too big of a disaster. Yeah, getting these things aligned uh, is uh, no fun, but it has to be done because that's how the lens came and that's how we're gonna return it. All right, so that is done. And now to put this back. And the deal with this is that uh, when you're putting it back on, you gotta align all of those 
screws all at once. Okay, so this is back on. And the washers, they gotta be back aligned. Otherwise, uh, might have a problem putting the screws in. See this darn fella, this one right here, it moved already. So I can see that this one is a pain. I'm going to put this one in first. These two ones near the, the ribbon cable, they are the worst because they have a double washer so I'm going to put this one in fairly well just so that everything stops moving okay now that everything stops moving you just put in the rest so before you jam it all the way in okay all the way down super compressed what you want to do is make sure that this weather sealing gasket is on properly because it's replaceable and because it's replaceable it can fall out of the rim too so now um, I can feel that it feels good and on top of that I'm going to turn it like diagonally just to double check okay everything looks good okay so you have to do a visual inspection make sure that the weather sealing gasket is everywhere and it's done right and then uh, at the same time you need to have force down on this lens because you don't want these uh, gas uh, these uh, washers to move Okay, so that is done. So I'm just going to thread these in just a little bit so that the washer cannot move. And, and now I'll do the final threading of this one too. Because I have... Uh, this one is not quite tight yet, but this side... It's close, but it's not tight. So this one I could tighten because it's the reverse corner. Okay, so this corner is done. This corner is done. Got that one. This one is done. And that is how you perform surgery. And I believe this is the toughest one I have ever dealt with because of those little washers and because of the uh, weather sealing gasket, which can be changed. And that's nice that it can be changed and because if you wear this out or if you damage this somehow, then theoretically you can purchase it from Sony or uh, some other repair facility and get it fixed so here it is the original baffle right here and this thing is no longer on the lens now the lens is bare you can see that the element appears to be larger well there's more of the element being revealed because it has no baffle so the downside is that you can catch strays without the baffle that means that there's chance of reflections and flare. But I found that this lens is fairly flare resistant to start with and even with the baffle removed, it is still rather flare resistant. And because the baffle just doesn't cover that much, it's not super useful. Anyhow, that's all I got for this little video where I removed the baffle. So if you see me referencing uh, baffle removal this is the most difficult one and the sony 10 to 18 is the easiest one because the baffle of this one 
all you do is just remove it right from the top. You don't have to remove the lens mount. You just remove the baffle. There's a, I believe there's three screws. You can see them here, one, two, three. And you just remove the baffle with those three external screws. The 10 to 20 is a bit more difficult. You have to remove the lens mount and then reveal the clips which remove the baffle. So, but if you want to micro size your kit, if you want that extra better active stabilization, then it might be worth it. Anyhow, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. See you in the next one. Take care.